jasna hap tan ga ette. With the yasna of seven chapters, which ranks next in antiquity after the gathas, we already pass into an atmosphere distinct from theirs. The dialect still lingers, but the spirit is changed. We have advanced personification of the bountiful immortals, that is, their personification seems more prominent, while the ideas of which they are the personification already, and to a proportionate degree, have grown dim. The name Amesha Spenta occurs, the Fravashis appear, the fires worshipped, the earth and the grass, to the waters, the soul of the kind, and to all holy and clean beings. The very word Yaza Ma'ide is applied for the first time. On the other hand, many latter objects of worship are totally absent. Well, worship is in respect, right? Um, the six seasons of the creation. The five divisions of the day, the five gathas, Zarathustra, the Beresman, Ahama, etc. A considerable period of time must have elapsed since the gathas had been composed, and a lengthy period must also be supposed to have passed before the Avesta of the latter type began to be sung and recited. The chapter numbered 42 and the Vendidad Sada of Brock House of 1850, and of the addition of Westergaard in 1852, and numbered 41, 18 through 35 in Spiegel's edition, seems a later edition, but it cannot be very much later, as it preserves the dialect and general features. An intentional imitation is not probable. Spiegel has included it with chapter 41 to preserve the number 7, and if the entire section is to be called the Yasna of Seven Chapters, it should most certainly not be numbered 43, so number merely to follow Westergaard, as do the first two parts of these translations from the Avesta. This portion should neither be incorporated with chapter 41 nor numbered as a separate one. It should be noted as a supplement. The name Seven Chapters was, of course, given to the pieces long after the composition. And remember, uh, well, I mean, there's ten verses here. Remember, like with the Quran, you have um, the seven oft-repeated verses. So perhaps the word chapter means something closer to that. But we have ten verses, but anyways. Praise to Ahura and the Immortals' Prayer for the Practice and Diffusion of the Faith. 1. We sacrifice to Ahura Mazda, the holy lord of the ritual order, and of the bountiful immortals, who rule aright, and dispose of all aright. And we sacrifice to the entire creation of the clean, the spiritual, and the mundane, with the longing blessing of the beneficent ritual, with the longing blessing of the magnificent religion, the Mazdayasnian faith, too. We are praisers of good thoughts, of good words, and of good actions, of those now and those hereafter. The Bazan has of those being done and of those completed. We implant them with our homage, and we do this. The more and yet the more, since we are praisers of the good from whom they speak. Three, that, therefore, we would choose, O Ahura Mazda, and thou, O Righteousness, the beauteous, that we should think and speak and do those thoughts and words and deeds among actual good thoughts and words and actions, which are the best for both the worlds. Four, and together with these gifts and actions, which are the best, we would pray for the kind which which represents the pure creation, that she may have comfort and have fodder from the famed and from the humble, from the potent and the weak. 
Five. To the best of good rulers is verily the kingdom because we render and ascribe it to him and make it thoroughly his own. To Mazda Ahur do we describe, uh, do we, uh, do we ascribe it, and to righteousness the best. Six. And thus both. Man or woman knows the duty. Both thoroughly and truly. So let him or her declare it, and fulfill it, and inculcate it, upon those who may perform it as is. 7. We would deeply be mindful of your sacrifice and homage, yours, O Ahura Mazda, and the best. And we would be mindful of the nurture of the kind, and that let us inculcate and perform for you according as we may, and for such Praisers as we are. 8. Under the shelter of the ritual order, let us do so in the act of fulfillment of its precepts towards every one of the plain and better creatures which are fit to live with a gift for both the worlds. 9. Yea, those words and sayings, O Ahura Mazda, we would reclaim as righteousness and as of the better mind, and we would make thee the one who both supports us in our proclamation of them, and who throws still further light upon them as they are. 10. And by reason of thy righteous order, thy good mind, and thy sovereign power, and through the instrumentality of our praises of thee, O Ahura Mazda, and for the purpose of still further praises by thy spoken words and for still further spoken words through thy yasna and for still further yasnas we would thus proclaim them and make thee the bestower of our light and the first note I think is in the first um, okay yes in, in verse 2. Now those of here after the Bahá'í translators, as so often, first saw the proper explanation here. You know, we have a lot of parentheses here, and some of that's from the Bahá'í. Um, and the purifiers are implanted in them, or adorners are planted with them. The tradition spreads from man to man, so thoroughly implanting themselves perhaps need, and we have hatam in the sense of the good thoughts, the shelter of the ritual order, or in the house and stall, and we also have that note here in the act of fulfillment, but remember the whole Audu Belah Menashe Tondarachim and other such Islamic formulas, um, This is just another way of expressing it. Well, obviously the driving out of the Satan um, as you seek refuge from God and, you know, all this stuff, you know, you're worshiping God, but the material creation and the spiritual creation are witnessing it. God's not the creation. So, you know, um, there's certainly that sort of stuff going on here. Um, and... Okay.